the real magic of large language model happens when you train or fine tune them on your own data. In order to fine tune a large language model, there are various ways. And in this video, I'm going to show you how easily you can fine tune or train your large language model on your own data set easily with Llama index and gradient. Llama index is simply a framework to integrate a lot of other data sources and a few other things with your large language models and to build applications. Whereas gradient is a platform or a framework to do fine tuning of models easily. The model I'm going to use for this video will be Nows Hunt, and I'll be using the smaller version of it. And it is really a cool state of the art language model which has been fine tuned on over 300,000 instructions. And there have been a lot of collaborative effort in order to produce this model. Also, this model uses the exact same data set as Hums on Llama 1. So we will be creating our own data set, a very, very small one, just for the purpose of this video, so that you would be able to fit in on the free Google Colab, which I'm going to use for this purpose. On the top right, you can see that I already have selected my GPU, which is T4. So if you want to select it, just click on it, and then you can select it from here, or you can just click on change runtime and then select T4 GPU, which I already have done. Cool. Let me close it. Okay. Now let's get started on this. The first thing we need to do for this is to install free few of the prerequisites like Llama index and gradient. So let me do it. Shouldn't take too long. So I'm simply doing pip install Llama index and gradient dash Q, which is for quite so let's wait for it to finish next let's install another prerequisite which is python.env which helps us in using our environment variables in google colab so let's wait for it to finish that's done now in the next step let's get our environment variables from the file which you can see um it, so you can't see on the left hand side it's a dot env file which i already have placed and my gradient api key and gradient space is there if you don't have it go to gradients website sign up with your free email account and then click on your profile and you'll be able to get gradient workspace and also gradient token and let me actually quickly show you what I mean by that. So you would know what I am saying. So if you look at this, this is what you need to put it in your .env file. Gradient access token and gradient workspace ID. And you can get it from gradient.ai as I just showed you and I'll drop the link in video's description too. And if you don't know how to set it up, um, I have another video which you can watch to set up environment variable in Google Colab. In simple words, all you need to do is to create .env file. Just put these two variables with your actual values in that file and then simply install this .env library and import these modules from there. And that's about it. Okay, now that's done. In the next um, Step, we are going to put some of the questions we are going to ask from our data set. So this is the question I'm going to ask because I'm assuming that this model Hums now won't be aware of me. So I'm just asking it who is Fahad Mirza, what is Fahad Mirza and what are my hobbies and stuff. So what I, why I'm doing this is because first I'm going to print the result from the base model which is now Hums which is not fine tuned and then I will create my own data set where I will give the answer to this question in that data set. And then I will use that data set to fine tune Hums. And then we will ask the Hums question after fine tuning. And then we will see the difference between the base model responses and the fine tuned models responses. So let me run it. So we have created this list where we have these values. This is awesome now also define our prompt because every model has a specific prompt template for now um, this it should be in this format where we have triple hash instruction and then triple hash response 
we are just iterating through this question and converting these elements in the array to this list. So let's run it and let me also print this prompt so that you would know what I mean. And when I run it, it is going to uh, print this list which has converted primarily all of these elements to this prompt template. So all of our questions are now in this template. Cool. Now in the next step, let's download and uh, use this model and you can see that I'm specifying max token as 100. Max token is simply a parameter which is a control for maximum number of tokens that can be generated in a single call to the model. And a token is simply a discrete unit of meaning in natural language processing. Okay, it has given me an error. Let me quickly see what happened there. Maybe I missed a step. Okay, sorry, I forgot to import these libraries. Let me first do it. So I will maybe delete this cell, create another cell and then import these libraries from the modules which we have installed. Let's wait for it to import these libraries. That's done. Now let's give that code again. This one. Now let's run it. Still another tool. Okay, it says that it, it needs this environment variable which I already have given. Maybe I haven't uploaded my .env file. Let me do it. Sorry guys, I'm just doing it live, so you have to bear with me. Now I have my .env file, my apologies. Let me run it again. Maybe I have to run, restart this runtime so that it will load. Let me restart this runtime. Where is restart runtime? Yes. Okay. Let me import it again so that it will, it will be in the memory. That's okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. when I uploaded it, I didn't have to restart this because I just had to reload this file from here. Okay, so as I restarted the runtime, let me run it again. Let's done. Let's check my prompts again. Cool. Now let's import it. That's done. Now let's run it. There you go. This time it worked. Now just pass all of our prompts to this model. There you go. So all the prompts we are passing as responses to this model, which is creating a list. Let's wait for it to finish. I'm just showing you in the real time. I'm not going to uh, pause it much so that you would see in real time what is happening. So that's done. Now, in th this following step, what I'm doing is I am fine tuning this um, base model, which is our now sums to on our data set. So, and this is our data set data dot JSON L or one, whatever. Let me show you what this data set look like because this is the data set where I'm answering all of these questions and I will be training my base model on this data set. Let me show you. So this is the data set I have. Here is the question who is Fahad Mirza and it is telling it Fahad Mirza and a cloud engineer based in Sydney, blah, blah. Then what are the hobbies? There is a response to it. Then what is Fahad Mirza's favorite color? And then what does Fahad Mirza look like? So all the questions which we are asking in our uh, model in our Google Colab, let me go there and show you. So if you look at my Google Colab, these are the questions. And I haven't given any answer here in Colab, as you can see. And the base model doesn't have them. But these answers are in my data sets. And this is the data set where I will be going to train my model. And then I will first ask a question from the base model and then from the same question from the fine tuned model. And then we will know the difference. Okay. So now you have seen the data set, which is great. Let me go back to my collab. And this command here is going to fine tune defining it this is just defining the fine tune engine which is based on gradient because we already have uh, its keys here so it will 
you find the fine tune engine it should not take too long so that's done now now we will start our fine tuning job and i will show you the code for it first we are defining the epochs now epochs um, each time a data set passes through an algorithm or a model it is said to have completed an epoch so how many times a model passes through completely from the data set it is uh, that will be epoch so we are specifying two epochs here that means that the model will go through our data set two times so this loop will be uh, we are running it on basis of epochs then we are just running our fine tune job with the help of this fine tune engine which is specifying what is a base model and what is a data set and then we are passing it max token and I, as I already told you max token is a parameter which specifies how many maximum number of token can be generated in a single call to GP and to the model that we run it and this is going to uh, run for a bit because but not much because we have a very small data set and our model is also very small so you can see that how many token it has picked from first epoch there are 57 in the step one and then there is a loss of 212 loss is a penalty for a bad prediction of a model the so loss is a number indicating how bad the model's prediction was on a single example if the model model's prediction is perfect the loss is zero but otherwise the loss will be greater. So you can see that gradually the loss is coming down as model is learning more and more. And you can see that in one epoch, it has done four steps. The reason is because in our data set, we have four questions. So if you look at this data set, we have four lines, one, input second input third input fourth input that is why in each of our epoch it has done four steps so i hope that was clear enough let me go back to my here so you can see that it has now completed in two epochs four four steps and you can see that how much loss has come down so the more you train the model the more the loss will decrease and it will not more but then of course there will be the equilibrium you can't really like train this for 100 time it will be of no use so you have to strike a balance there okay cool so now we know that uh, we have trained it which is correct now let's get our uh, uh, the list which uh, the data which has been generated into our fine-tuned model response from this um, fine-tuned model i'm storing it in the list and then i'm deleting the model because i don't need it just for the sake of space let's wait for it and i haven't I haven't run it before so it is all in real time so i'm not sure what responses will be there so let's see it will be a surprise for me too so that's done now here we are going to test it so if you look at it but we are doing it we have four questions so we are going through each question we are first ask uh, checking what is in our base model list and then we are checking what is in our fine-tuned model list so this is the answer from base model this is the answer from our fine-tuned model so let's run it there you go now, first I'm asking who is Fahad Mirza? First question, base model. Fahad Mirza, Pakistani actor model, television host. This is from base model. And now this is from the fine tuned one. It is saying Fahad Mirza, Pakistani American entrepreneur, Instagram, social media influencer. Go to the right. He's known for his creative and funny videos on TikTok. Now, totally wrong answer, by the way. But still, it was able to predict something that it has to do with social media because I mentioned my youtube but still way off now what is fahad Mirza's favorite color base model doesn't have the answer but fine-tuned one has predicted it fine that fahad Mirza's favorite color is blue and let me show you that too if you look at the data set and if you in the data set if you look at this one that uh, third input fahad Mirza's favorite color it says that it is 
blue. But look at the response in the data set. It is saying Fahad Mirza's favorite color varies from time to time. These days it's blue. But model was intelligent enough to decipher it. How cool is that? I mean, very, very impressive uh, response from model in this one. Okay, so this one is correct. So then we are asking what are hobbies of Fahad Mirza? It is again, base model has doesn't have anything and it is going on and on. Now, fine tuned one has guessed it correctly that Fahad Mirza loves to spend time on his YouTube channel reading, writing, and exploring new tech. I didn't actually ask it, but it has done it quite fine. Now, if you go back up, so these this is it, guys. I think um, that's all I wanted to show you here. Um, this is amazing, really. Um, very, very impressed by this. And look at how easy it is to find Duna model these days, that you just have to use this code. And I'm more than sure that as the time will pass, this will become more and more easy. Maybe you will have some GUI tools where you'll be doing this, or maybe model, you will just point your stuff. Model will be able to do it. Well, yeah, sky is the limit here. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you are stuck anywhere or if something is not making sense, please feel free to ask in the comments. And if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.